beautiful and radiant as always. I yeah. think your, your YouTube videos, your Instagram, you absolutely just radiate and glow and you've got such a big Aww. soft heart. I'm like, I'm so drawn to her. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you. I'm so grateful. Oh, same, same. Oh my God. So, look at you. Fabulous. Oh, oh no, look at you. <laughs> I, I got all dressed up for you. I took a shower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, you're making me blush now. <laughs> so cute. So oh, cute. This is so sweet. Oh, I love your setup. Like a little bit of library in the background. You've got the um the the monk, the Buddhist. Yeah, I got my my huh? Buddha. It's a book. It is the most gorgeous book. It's a book filled with just uh mandalas, like ancient mandalas. It's so beautiful. That's a book? Yeah, it's a book. Huge. I'll show you. It's really, really neat, this book. This is the last uh, gift my dad ever gave me. Look at this. Can you see it? Oh, my God. These, Look at the artwork. This, these mandalas are so gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. I know. That's the stunning. wheel the wheel of diluted existence oh my goodness i know it this book is so beautiful oh wow the chakras <gasps> i know i love this i just love this i've never seen chakras in in that type of design before yeah I oh my God. I thought that was a picture frame <laughs> it's oh it's a book, a book. <laughs> So Rose, tell me about you. And you we're not live, right? We're you're recording this we're and then recording, yes. Yes. Yeah. And then do you edit it and then you put it on your podcast? I can make I can make cuts and whatever suits you. Yeah. Oh. And you do a lifestyle channel, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I basically, the topics that I cover on my YouTube channel is basically law of attraction, how to relationship, manifesting, spirituality, mainly spirituality and personal growth. That's what I focus on. I love that. That's where we intersect in life because right. I kind of specialize in relationship compatibility and love and um, self-empowerment, self-worth, you know, how to become the best version of you and right. looking through the lens of astrology you can even see who you were born to be so some people uh don't even know why they exist and it's very sad when you meet those people they mm -hmm. don't have a life purpose and there's a vacancy inside of them and so sometimes i get a 50 year old in my office saying you know who am I? Like, why do I, why am, why am I even born? Mm. I know. And it, it's, it's painful. Like, or, or a lot of moms say, you know, beyond the, the life of my children, who am I? And, and it's heartbreaking sometimes. I can strongly relate there. Cause when I was a stay home mom for four years straight, I lost who I am. I lost completely my identity. I didn't know who I was. It was Chills. so depressing. And I felt like, what am I brought on this earth to do? For me, it's all about purpose. If I'm not living on purpose, then what is my exist ex existence for? So when I hear people just wandering around mindlessly, they are reacting like a, ro a robot and I felt like, oh my God, I'm so inclined. I just want to help them and just come from a space of heart and soul and love. I teach yeah. about self-love. So <laughs> self-love and finding your purpose, living on purpose is so big. I, 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 I cannot stress how big living on purpose means because I think, I mean, I'm close, close, to, close to 40 now and it's just so recent that I just finally found my calling and mission. I'm thinking, oh my God, I have so much to do. So it's been for the last two, three years, it's been just gradually kind of like a compounding effect. Mm -hmm. And the people that I've coached and helped, it's just so not just liberating, 
but it's actually just um you know what what you're brought here to to do like just like for yourself you're such an inspiration and role model to so so many because you're brave you're bold and you're clever you're smart and you speak through spirit and then it comes with em emotional in intelligence and i feel that yeah that's just so big over than just um, than just IQ. IQ never really made sense. Like like the schooling system has failed us so many times. I've have, and, I, and I have children, so I have a four and a six, and I just want them oh. to be always homeschooled. <laughs> and I feel I feel like I have more um, kind of like an insight, a more enlightened mm -hmm. to give them what life education needs and to provide for them so yeah so when you speak about purpose i i, I just start to get all welled up and I'm like yeah purpose <laughs> oh i completely understand and one thing that i can take away from what you just said is um a lot of people come to me just as you described you know after having raised their kids but maybe gotten them off to college and then they're 50 and then they come and ask what their life purpose is. And unlike you and unlike me, one thing that I found out and I have chills saying this is that many of us, I, I think some people really believe that a life purpose will be handed to you and you have grown your purpose. It is something that you birthed inside of you and grew it. And that's the same with me. I grew my life purpose. I built it. I sculpted it. I cultivated it. So wow. here's my example that I give, right? Like some moms, they'll come and say, you know, what am I supposed to do? Should I just volunteer at the children's hospital or should I go work at the school? You know, like what should I do? And a life purpose doesn't work that way. A life purpose is a passion that it starts from a seed and grows. So think about Oprah Winfrey for a minute. Yeah. You know, when she first started, I remember the very first time, I think it was in the early 80s when she, you know, was a talk show host. Now, hold on one second. The world did not know who Oprah was on that first day. Yeah. And she is the quintessential icon for a woman building her empire, right? And so they didn't call her and say, hey, we want you hey we're looking for oprah do you know the oprah that we know today that position um we're looking for somebody to fill that position no she built that iconic um role model she built that enterprise and so that is what a life purpose looks like now we're all not going to be oprah but even on a small scale even a school teacher you know even a school teacher who just teaches 30 kids mm -hmm. builds that and that is the difference between a job and a life purpose. So yeah, that's completely that's, different. And that's what I see in you and what you're doing. You Aww. took a seat. Yeah, and you're growing it. And yeah. so, you know, people say, what's my calling? And it's never showing up like, oh, you're supposed to be uh, stocking the shelves at Safeway. <laughs> You know, but how it could show do, up is do you guys have Safeway there? I thought <laughs> yeah. Safeway is just an Australian brand. <laughs> no. Oh, that's a question. Oh, <laughs> do you have, where do you live? What time is it where you're at right now? Well, it's actually eight thirty a.m. or eight or quarter to nine a.m. Wow, you look this good at. 9 a.m. Oh, babes, it's the lighting, it's the make makeup. Trust me, I don't look look this good when I wake up. <laughs> oh my god! Such a sweetheart. <laughs> I what admire how time? beautiful you are. You're just so naturally beautiful. You glow, oh, and you're sweet. When you smile, you smile from the soul and the heart. I'm like, oh my god, I've gotta get in touch with this girl. <laughs> So sweet. Oh, you are sweet. Thank you, Rose. Um, which leads me on to my next question. Like, how did you, how did, like, what's your, what's your journey and what led you to this path of doing tarot reading 
ast astrology is like wow you know those two oh. combined is like pfft. um well there's two things that led me to it and I'll tell you, I think we build our lives out of crisis and out of tragedy oftentimes. And yes. so crisis and tragedy led me to both. So when I was young in my 20s, actually my late 20s, I consider that young, um, a dear friend of mine um, committed suicide. And then I found out many years later that it was very most likely a murder. And it had disturbed me and cut me up to the core. And I just couldn't wrap my, my head around it. It was so tragic and so painful that I just, it spun my own world on its axis for like three months. And so I went soul searching for, for answers. And in that, I realized I had really deep intuitive gifts because I could see things and I could see truths um, about his death. And so that opened up my channel to a wider degree. And I started exploring the tarot to find even deeper answers. So I used the tarot as a tool. I used the, the tarot as a tool in order to like keep my objectivity, you know, so it's not my own opinion. Yes. And then I trust the tarot um, in, a, in a way because it's like uh, this conduit for me. So I'm not just talking to myself yeah. and I receive messages through the tarot. So uh, Matt's death um, really birthed that tool and that intuition and gave me the, I wouldn't say confidence, but I was so desperate that it forced me to use my own intuition and then the tarot I got really good at it and people started asking me for readings and I started doing them and I was having a lot of accuracy so I kept doing it then I was going through a breakup in my life at the same time like one year later and I went to see an astrologer to ask if I should leave this relationship and it was a really good relationship in a lot of ways but in many ways it didn't fulfill me and it suppressed me Mm -hmm. um, and it made me be live a smaller life than what I felt was burning inside of me. And she was actually quite a wonderful, wonderful with her gift. She saw truths in my chart that just shocked me, but she was quite horrible. Uh, she didn't have a moral compass and she was uh, a gypsy and she had one of those neon palms, you know, on the, in the window, like never go to those people. They're yeah, broad. Yeah, and so she was just sort of a sick person, but she had a true talent. Right. And then she kind of like financially took advantage of me and it was fraudulent. But she gave me enough of a gift yeah. that um, that I was like, if she can do that, what if a really decent human being became yeah. an astrologer? And oh, yeah. wow, what if, what if I learned it? So. I, the whole premise of my business is integrity mm -hmm. and honesty and genuineness and authenticity. And every single time I give a reading, I think of that woman. And I built my, my business and my life and my, my work and my passion out of what I don't want to be. Wow. In You're her. speaking my language because I just filter out all the unwanted or undesired personality or traits or character of someone that I used to look up to. And then I build mm -hmm. like my own kind of persona. I build my own pro profile. Like <laughs> it's, so it's, so, it's so nice when people see I have a little bit of Oprah. And I'm like, oh, that's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Or sometimes I get Mother Teresa because I'm very nurturing because I'm an, an empath. And when, yeah. when I first found out what that was, I, I, I was thinking, it's no wonder people would take advantage of, of me because I'm so giving and so kind. And I speak gently. I don't judge. I, I don't criticize. Yeah. So I feel like you're an, an empath too. Am I correct? Mm-hmm. And you know what I call that is, 
I call that clairsentient. So it's like when you can slip inside of uh, another person's feelings and emotions and wear them. And you have to be careful because you have to be able to take yourself back too, right? Like yeah. slip in and slip out. You don't want to live in there. But that's being clairsentient. So how I get my confirmation is through a uh, physical sensation. So when I'm right or when I'm accurate, I get like full body chills. And when I'm super accurate, my whole crown chakra lights up. Do you, do you get feelings too like that? Yeah, that sensation, the vibration is just kind of like, um, I'm in that yeah. vortex kind of feeling, but I feel yeah. it's, um, I need to go and purge. I need to go and just heal and relax. I need my own downtime for me to recoup, recuperate. My energy is just so, so drained. I mean, even though I do practice how to, um, you know, to shield, guard and protect my aura and my energy field, it sometimes uh -huh. gets penetrated because I'm so always giving. So I, I, just, mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a lot of practice to, to still like step back and say, Rose, you can't keep on giving, you know. If they are mm -hmm. takers, then they're, they're obviously just energy vampires. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, um, I still practice and to really give me that solid foundation to really protect my, myself but, and, and only give to those who are willing to, to, to help themselves because there's no point in giving to someone when they don't want help. That's very hard. Mm. And you know, you know where it gets tricky is I have the, the, the client that says, um, Oh, let's just pretend this is just pretend, but you know, I want to lose 20 pounds. How do I do that? And then I tell them, this is just pretend you have to walk more and you have to not eat the cheesecake. And then, um, they came to me earnestly, earnestly wanting the remedy. And then you give the remedy and then they don't want it. Mm. So sometimes you don't know that they don't want to help themselves until you're deep into the process or the relationship. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If you kind of like, you have to coach them and guide them through and figure out what they really need and not what, what they really want. <laughs> Cause at the end, when, when I'm talking to people, they, they kind of discover what they really need, not what they want. And it's like, whoa, I did not know that. I'm like, yeah, well, this is what, what we're here, here to do, is figure out what your inner you know, being wants, what your soul craves for, what you truly desire, not just what you want out of a 3D effect. Like everything is just so energy or orientated that they are just not aware of it. So I feel I need to hold their hand, like sit down to the level, bring, bring them up, uplift them inspire them hold their hand and then let let them go because i don't want them to mother them and it's like that drains me <laughs> and i find that well, you must get that a, a, a lot as well through your reading as well it, it's so interesting i love the words that you use because we we do speak the same language of the soul yeah. and one of the things that i say is when i talk about astrology signs and i have a series called um, my in love series. So Aries in love, Taurus in love, Virgo in love, right on my, that. on my YouTube, on my YouTube channel. But, um, in, especially with like Aries, you know, uh, people ask me, you know, how do I attract an Aries? So that series that I did was the top 10 ways that you can seduce each sign. And so with Aries, especially I, I talk about what Aries wants, and it's with Scorpio too, with what Aries wants and what Aries needs are two totally different things. And if you give Aries what they want, um, they won't stay with you. They will only stay with you if you give them what they need. <laughs> and they don't want what they need, <laughs> but they'll stay with you if you give them what they need and they'll leave you if you give them what they want. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Figure that puzzle out. <laughs> Oh, it's goodness. fun. Yeah. That's so, 
specific and very precise. Wow. Yeah. Tell me your sun sign. Can I know it? Yeah, they are both Virgos. I oh, know. They're both in September. Um, one's a year of a snake. The other one's year of the lamb. Oh, these are your children or you? My children. Oh, they're you have two. Vir so they're both Vir Virgos. Uh, so one's a year of a snake and one's one of the year of the lamb. That's the Chinese. So you you gave birth to two perfect people just <laughs> perfect i'm like if you're so lucky to get a virgo child you did something right in your past life <laughs> i hope i did but they have really draining me i'm thinking why can't i do things right i'm thinking they just always constantly nagging whining calling me out like mommy don't do this like they're bossing me around like i'm the leo I'm a double Leo. I don't know how that happened. Like they control the household, my life, how I do things. It's like, mommy, two hands on the steering wheel. Like, oh, sorry, boss. <laughs> there are rules and regulations. You know, my, my daughter has, um, she's so cute. She has a Virgo South node. So that means her past life was Virgo. Yes. And I, I often, when she, she's 13 now, but when she was two years old, I would call my mom and I would say, mom, there's like a new sheriff in town and she's two years old telling me the rules and regulations. And it's so funny because um, Leo is the king of the jungle. Yeah. Leo is um, the, the entire, you know, is, it represents the sun in our solar system. So has created all life force energy. So Leo is very highly responsible and is the sort of um, the king. And, and then I'm Sagittarius and Sagittarius is also another version of that. But um, he's, Sagittarius is also a king, king of all, all kings. And Jupiter is his ruling planet where Jupiter, you know, <laughs> is Zeus who, it, in mythology, you know, created the universe. Mm -hmm. And then the sun, everything revolves around the sun and the sun has created all life force energy. So to be a king and be bossed by a Virgo, <laughs> it's like, you are living in my palace. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you even- little <laughs> <laughs> little uh, I call them one uh, thing. baby boss, big baby boss. <laughs> big baby boss it's cute well the neat thing is is that when a virgo has confidence to talk to their superior like that you actually are doing something right in life because virgos are very humble and they're born into this world having to develop their self-worth they're born into this world with a lot of self-doubt and they grow it and so they work very hard to understand what are the expectations of me? And then they meet them. And then when other people don't do those expectations, they get confused. So it's actually pretty darn good that we've got confident kids because oh. Virgo is the servant and Virgo usually serves the king. But in this case, your, your children and my child have found confidence to test the king. <laughs> yes, they are kind of like um, priming and prepping me up to be, I don't know, I, I just found, I find lately they've been such a, gen a gentleman, like they would actually get out of the car first and then say, mum, don't move, I'm going to open your car door every time now, okay, you don't touch, touch that at, at all, it's like, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> I'm like, mummy, uh -huh. drink some water, mummy, mm -hmm. I love you, I'm going to look after you, okay, I was like, oh my God. But then they fight. It was like, this is not how you look after mommy. It was like, oh. <laughs> but they're just so cheeky. But they're so, they are just growing into like this little manhood now. And I'm feeling I must be doing something right because I've been overcompensating and overgiving to them. And it feels mm -hmm. like I'm being rewarded subtly. <laughs> and in, in in their own way so i'm just blessed <laughs> thank you for clarifying exactly. that and i did watch your um i think it's all about leo's your video did you watch the leo in love that's a little better video leo in love oh, 
Not yet. That's my on on my list to watch next. But um, that one out of the out of the whole series of yeah. my in love series, I I I really love that Leo in love uh, series. It is the longest video. It's like an hour long. Everything else okay. is like thirty oh, awesome. minutes. To 40 minutes. I had a lot to say about that sign and I even bring a crown and I put it on my head. Oh, you go, <laughs> girl. Oh, it's it's really good this on. Woo. <laughs> and then I had a comment on that video from a Leo and I do say in the video, I'm like, Leo's just very rarely will you see a Leo cry. Very rarely. Like if you can make a Leo cry, then you you've got them like that that's very very rare to see a lion uh, just to see a lion humbled like that to tears you just don't you don't see a lion you know remove their mask and their mane and so at the very end i talk pretty deeply about the deeper side of leo and then this leo commented on that video and said, you literally brought me to tears. And I was like, so that's, that's how I know that was a good video. Oh my God, I'm getting goosebumps now. I gotta watch it. <laughs> yes, Leo um, in love. We are known, known to have such huge hearts and we just, we, I mean, we, we don't normally wear our hearts on our sleeves, but we're, we're our hearts, we just wanna give you give and, and then we over give, isn't it? Yep. And I call you guys the Santa Claus heart. Even if, you're, even if you don't believe in Santa Claus, it's like you guys have the Santa Claus heart. I'm like, who doesn't want to be loved by a Leo? Uh, nobody. <laughs> so there's this saying as, as well that they, they say you can't outgive a Leo. Is that true? Because I'm actually I think, Pisces, that now. I think Pisces, I think Pisces could uh, beat you. Really? Yeah, because oh. Pisces, Pisces will give you every single thing they have, plus all of themselves, plus their soul, plus they'll promise you their next lifetime. Oh my God. Oh. And Leo, Leo won't give you their identity, not for long. <laughs> but Pisces will. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Pisces will strip themselves of all their bark. Because mm -hmm. they're such deep thinkers. Yeah, and they are fully capable of merging 1000% and just completely evaporating. It's like, if you've ever been in deep intimacy with a Pisces, it's like nothing you've ever experienced before. And it's bizarre because if you're not a Pisces, involved with a Pisces, because they give all of themselves, like every fiber, every essence. There is no, if they love you, there is nothing in the world they would not do for you. They don't know, no. Yeah. Wow. No. Is, that, is that based on astrology reading, is it? Um, well, I think that's based on, so I have like over 10,000 clients in 17 countries and I've probably given wow. oh, over 100,000 readings. And so I start to see really glaring patterns mm. and I, I start to be able to see like a, it's almost like being able to do a wide, uh, like wide research yeah. after three years of collecting data and so one of the things I'll tell you really honestly Rose that I love doing in my YouTube videos is I'm a myth buster so there's a lot of like stereotypes and myths I find in a lot of those videos and so I like to peel back the onion and really tell you the truth yes and a lot of people just will give you the surface yes. and I I don't I don't do that so if you let's say you were a leo but you had your moon in pisces and you were pisces rising and you had your jupiter in pisces well you could be a leo and you'd probably be just like i described pisces yeah. 
Wow. You would have some Pisces energy in you. So you have to look at the whole entire chart and you also have to see where the planets are. So let's say you don't have any Pisces planets, but you've got eight planets in the 12th house. You're going to be just like I said about Pisces because the 12th house is Pisces house. So you have to know your planets, you have to know your signs, you have to know your houses, you have to know your aspects, and you have to know your rulers, and then you can get that bigger picture. But I couldn't know you very well if I, if I only know that you're a Leo, if I don't know your rising sign or your moon sign or what house, you're, what house your, um, your sun sign is in. I have a client, and she's a Capricorn, and um, I asked her when I first met her, I said, what sign are you? And she said, I'm a Capricorn. So I said, let me do your chart. And I went and did her chart. And I said, you're not a Capricorn. And she goes, I'm not? I said, no, you're a 29 degree Capricorn. Never again in your life are you allowed to say you're a Capricorn. You always have to say you're a 29 degree Capricorn because that's a whole different thing. And she was like, okay. So that was about five years ago. And last night she came on to my tarot card happy hour party i'm doing these happy hour parties at four o'clock on yeah. friday every week yeah, anyway, she, I, I, I made everybody there were 22 people i made every single person introduce themselves and by the time it got to her she said hi my name is you know and then she said i'm a 29 degree capricorn <laughs> <laughs> just completely transform tra transform herself. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness so oh. when you're born when you're born on the very last day of a sign, the yes. very last day, in the very last minute, in the very last breath of a sign, before it turns to the next sign, right? So the last day of Leo, the, you know, before Isn't it turns it? into Virgo. Yeah, that's the 29th degree. Okay. And when you're born on the 29th degree, a lot of people believe that let's say it's Leo Virgo. A lot of people believe that, oh, I'm a Leo Virgo. No, you're not. You're a 29 degree Leo or you're a zero degree Virgo. And those are two totally different things. So 29 degree Leo, did you say that's you? No, I'm 22nd. So I'm 22nd of August. So I don't know if you consider that as a 29 degree. And you're not a Virgo. That's the day it changes. I'm the cusp. So I'm, I'm the cusp, but I'm still Leo. So you, you probably are a 29 degree Leo. So, that's, <laughs> so that is very different. If you were born just a few hours later, you would have been a Virgo, but there is a line in the sand, mm -hmm. but you probably have your mind or your Venus in Virgo and then your soul in um, Leo. So you probably do have Virgo characteristics. I do. <laughs> but yeah, you do. Okay. So, but that 29th degree is when the energy is leaving. Leo and it's born into crisis. So either the birth was hard on the mother or there was crisis when you were born, you know, you could have been born premature or with the cord wrapped around your neck or blue baby or something, or your birth was um, cha challenging for your parents. Or um, you could also see that you were born into a family that was experiencing hardship, hard times, or crisis. Yeah, so pretty much sums it up. Wow. <laughs> does it? Yeah, yeah, so the 29, when you're a 29 degree um, sun sign of any sign, you have been born into a crisis and you will build your life and your identity out of that very crisis. Oh my. But when you're born at a zero degree, you come in with more power and punch. You come in like assertive and like ready for like, like to, you know, world taking on the world. And 29 degree, there's a little bit of a shire quality to be that Leo energy. It's like, I want to be that Leo. I want to be that Leo. And then I'm scared but I want to be, but I'm scared. And then eventually you grow into it. <laughs> okay. So it's inevitable that I'm this kind of like, sometimes like a bit of a rebellious wild child then. <laughs> but I'm yeah. humble as well. So I actually stick to that humbleness side of, of, of me. I'm and that's the Virgo and yes, the 29 degree. That. Oh my God. This is so scary. <laughs> 
this is you know you you give people such a good insight and kind of like a clear reading of of why and how they actually react and behave and res and respond and why they actually live their life in such a way it's just um it's so profound founding it's like you guide them but then you oh. have to incorporate tarot and astrology together it's like wow <laughs> really fun you're so inspiring um oh. I wanted to ask, ask you about astrology. Is that really difficult for people to follow? Because you, you mentioned about zero degree, 29 degree. I never understood that. Like what's the actual guidelines to actually understand this? Wow. Um, I do think it's really hard and I do think it's complicated, yeah. but it's like, once you start getting, once you start like opening up the door to the complexity of astrology, yeah. you realize how complex we all are and what it ends up ultimately doing is developing compassion um, for yourself and for you to have towards others because you can see inside the chart you can see um, somebody's wounds and hurts and aches and pains and you can see this uh, complex onion that just needs to be peeled back so one of the things I do really love to do um, and I'm doing more of it now uh, at this point in my career i didn't do this very much in the beginning i just gave people answers in the beginning now when i show you your chart i teach you also how to read it and oh, wow. how to look for the clues it's like a treasure map and how to work with it and so ultimately astrology i think empowers and inspires you to be the very best version of yourself. It yeah. also helps you fall in love and stay in love with the people in your life. Because when I looked at my child's chart, it's very different than my own chart. And I realized that I had to grow new pieces inside of me to parent her in the way that would empower her and inspire her because she's a much quieter soul than I am. So just the way so if I didn't have that tool, I, I wouldn't be a very good parent to her because I wouldn't know what her deeper needs are, wow. you know? And then, and then I love doing forecasting astrology too. And forecasting is predictive work where you look at transits to see um, how the day or the week or the month or the year will affect you. So that's really cool too. Wow. So you actually give people blueprints? Oh, yeah 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 do you want have you have you seen an astrology chart so yes so um i have an astrology reading here in melbourne his name is bud Bar barber um so he actually reads my reads my chart i'm still trying to get the concept and grasping the whole rules and you know like the degrees fourth house fifth house i don't understand that um, all I say is that, can you put it just in layman terms? Like, what do I have to look out for in this particular month or this particular year? <laughs> um, you know, so he's, he's giving me a burst of guidelines and what I need to look out for and what I need to prepare for. So that actually really helps. And it's actually quite precise and really ac and accurate. Yes. So Astrology. Yeah. It's yeah. very precise and it is very accurate. Like when I yeah. do wedding charts, I tell my clients, do not take your vows until 313. Oh, that, <laughs> wow. That's even more precise and clear. Oh my gosh. Well, he probably, if you were looking for a date to open up a business or launch something, he probably would give you a window of opportunity. Like, you know, the best time is between, you know, three o'clock and four o'clock or, or whatever it is. But hmm. when somebody comes to me for, you know, the best day to get married, I have to say, do you mean the very best day to get married in the month of May? Or do you mean the very best Saturday? <laughs> Cause wow. it's like, and then I'll come back and go, there are no good Saturdays. Do not do it. 
the yes. best Saturday there is, is in December. <laughs> so astrology doesn't like work, work with you. It like, it's just so, and you can choose it or not. Wow. But okay. Yeah. So for instance, my situation, he said that I would actually have to move houses twice on two occasions in a space of 12 months. And I thought, mm -hmm. why would I move after 12 months? It happened. I actually, I, the landlord wanted to sell the property. So I had to vacate. And now I found this beautiful mini style, like penthouse. <laughs> I just love it. I'm thinking everything happens for a reason. And this is why I practice on, on about um, law of attraction and such and, and why there's no such thing as co coincidence or chances. Um, I just felt, felt like why were I wanting to move after 12 months? Like, I love this place. But then he actually goes, no, just pack your bags. And he actually gave, he predicted this like 12 months in advance i'm thinking i just moved moved in i don't want to move and he goes no but the <laughs> three weeks or so i had a call from the realtor and he actually goes uh you have to move i'm sorry i'm like what i mean bud you're so right this is freaking me out like what are the chances there it just doesn't add up <laughs> that's predictive astrology that's forecasting it's really really fun when you get it right and yeah, so he said, look out in regards to that particular month. So, yeah, that just totally blew through my mind and it just gave me more, um, how do you say, a deeper respect for astrology reading. With, um, with tarot, is, is it, it's not that accurate, do you think? Or is, it, or is that more on a personal journey? if I ask that question correctly. Okay, so I'll use the tarot for questions that astrology can't answer for me. Yes, okay. And then I'll use astrology for uh, timing. And then sometimes I'll confirm the timing with the tarot. So wow. uh, for example, astrology can't do certain things like it can't tell you how emotionally healthy a person is or how mentally healthy a person is or am i going to pass the sat test mm -hmm. you know i can give you a great i can give you a great idea of of how that day is going to feel for you like oh this is going to be easy or a hard day for you but that doesn't tell me if you're going to pass or fail, but yeah. my, my tarot cards will, wow. you know, or if somebody says, you know, does, uh, does Bob like me? Mm. Well, I can put the charts together and I can see that they go well together and there's compatibility, but I can't see if he likes you in astrology, but I could with tarot and my intuition. So I use the two. Yeah but I can see if the relationship will be easy or hard. Yeah. In, oh. the, in the astrology, in the astrology. That's amazing. Intuition to me is so, so huge. Cause I've, I'm so stubborn, right? <laughs> and I mean, like, what are the consequences for you personally, if you do not follow through your gut feeling, your intuition, your inner knowing? Ooh. They're usually pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. my experience too. <laughs> they, they, my, the thing usually falls apart. But you know, I find that universe or God ca catches me, like will ultimately take care of me. So if I've sabotaged myself, I find that oftentimes I get kind of a redo. Yeah, wow. So rare, it's rare that I ever mess up so badly that there's no return you know i usually can repair something but i think that um like i don't do you have a lot of regrets in your life i don't have a tremendous amount of regrets i used to now it's like no that's 
that's for my experience to grow from. This is what yeah. I need for my spirit and soul to actually experience and and grow from. It's you know sideways, lengthways, mm -hmm. whatever. It's meant to happen, and I only did that particular um, that. I only selected that particular choice and that decision during that time because that's the only resources that I had. But yeah. when it comes to my in intuition, I'm thinking, okay, I shouldn't have done that. I should, should just listen to my guidance and yeah. just trust the process and surrender and believe and have faith and not just, yeah. and not just rely on the, on the 3D effects because it's not it's not realistic yeah. realistic it's not good it doesn't it doesn't serve me and it doesn't serve others so i've had rep repercussions yes uh in but, regret um no lately no <laughs> but back in the days yes but you know i think um rose that there's a i i think that this is because as we get older we, you, people who are evolved, people who want to evolve and grow, take those setbacks that maybe not following their intuition created for them. And I think we take those, those, those setbacks and we repackage them, like you just said, into lessons. Yeah. And so you don't have regrets if you're willing to learn from those quote mistakes. Yeah. Um, and so I think that I think that we're we're both similar in that way, you know, where we're willing to learn from those yeah. times when we didn't listen to our intuition. Yes, and it does help others because we're leading by example that we can't just continue continue on, you know, beating ourselves down because that's not self self love there. That's not that's no self values, self self worth no self respect there there is no 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 growth so yeah right. what you just said it's just it's a valuable lesson for us to learn from and you know learn how to filter out and avoid anything that doesn't serve us well right especially for the people that's so dear to dear to us they just want the best for for us to, to see us grow so yeah oh wow May I ask you something really personal in a <laughs> spiritual le level? <laughs> Who's your spiritual guidance? Do, do you have ancestral guidance? Like for, for me, I, I feel I have a Hanuman, but a baby Han Hanuman, and he slaps my head every, every time. It's, that's how cheeky he, he is. Um, at the same Can you feel it? Do you feel I feel, feel the off my head. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't work. Like he's like, you know, I was like, stop doing that, right? It's like, yeah. It's like, all right, all right. I was like, what? What am I doing wrong? It's like, oh, I have to stop what I'm doing and reflect on the on things that that was actually in my mind, in, in my thoughts. Um, but then I see <laughs> eight or nine other ancestral guardians with him, just like. Fong their arms like, oh God, here he is again. <laughs> Annoying Rose. Like, Leave her alone. <laughs> How cute. What is your rising sign? So my rising is also a Leo. Oh, do you have your son in the 12th house or in the I first house? No, I believe so. I mean, I do have, have my chart here. I just have no idea how to read it. But, um, but Barbara, in the, Barbara says... I think it's in the... So, I bet um, it's in the first house. Ascending, ascending Leo, r r rising Leo. That's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I think you're a first house sun because if you're a 29, if you're born on the very last day of Leo and Leo is rising, it's very unlikely that it's going to be rising at 29 degrees. You know, it's probably going to be, I mean, there's 28 chances that it's going to be one through 28 and so then your leo is in the first house okay so that's that's great so you know i love how you have so many spirit guides working with you but with a leo rising and a leo first house the reason why he's 
you know, hit me over the head with a baseball bat, not really, but metaphorically, is because the Leo can be so um, hard to reach. You called it stubborn, right? And so they have to really get you. <laughs> so you know for sure, hey, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Wonderful. Nice. I'm Leo Rice too, so that's why we're a lot alike. Oh, wow. Isn't that funny? Like attracts like, Rose. <laughs> that's right. I was going to say that. So do you have, um, like, deities or anything like that? Oh, I love that question. Um, when I was a little girl, my dad was a really wonderful, wonderful man. And I talk about him in my video that I am putting up tomorrow and it's my magic trick. I'm in my video tomorrow. I load content every Sunday at 9.30 if you want to follow in the morning Pacific time. But um, I use his chart as an example on how, on how to teach you how to find the headline of your life. Mm -hmm. Like if your life was written in a headline, in a sound bite, um, basically your legacy written in a headline on a billboard, what would your chart say um, about you? What would your headline be? So I teach you this magic trick and how to figure it out and how to do it in my video that I'm uploading tomorrow. But in it, I use my dad's chart as an example. And he has a very deep chart, a very profound chart. And so the story that I tell is this. When I was seven years old, my dad would tuck me into bed and he would read me Dr. Seuss, like green eggs and ham or, oh, the places we go or something, right? And he would come in with a bath towel wrapped around his head like a turban. <laughs> and he would like lay in my bed with me, so sweet and so cute. And he really wasn't interested in the Dr. Seuss story. He couldn't wait to get to the question and he asked me every single night, Mary, who is God? What is the meaning of life? And I was like, and you didn't say that. wow. <laughs> Every night. And I was like, dad, that's like way too big of a question. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And he would ask, who is God? And so he spoke to me oftentimes in questions. And so he never answered those questions, except in the way that he lived life. And then when we would sit at the dinner table, we would hold hands. And he would pray like this. He would say, let us thank all the gods, Buddha, Muhammad, Allah, Christ, and Jehovah um, for our abundance and our prosperity and the food on our plate. And he taught me through the course of his life that there were many portals and many pathways and one was not better than the other to reach God. And he lived in Asia, in Cambodia and Thailand for much of his life, for 20 years. And so I visited him and lived in Cambodia and I lived in Thailand for my summers with him. And so he had a broad, broad picture. And as a young girl uh, traveling through Thailand, I thought, and many people in Thailand are Christian, but there are many Buddhists there too. I thought to myself, as a young girl searching, right? I wasn't into astrology yet, but I had this great man as my father. How could all these people who believe in Buddhism die or go to hell because they don't believe in Christ? Yeah. It's crazy. So he opened up my, my mind and my spirituality really big and really compassionately from a really young age. And, and so I've, I've always sort of felt very open-minded about however you reach divine spirit is truly okay. Oh my goodness. So it all started at the age of seven from, from your dad. That is such a big gift. Yeah, he's a really beautiful, beautiful soul that way. And that book right there that I showed you at the beginning, that Buddhist book, that was the very last gift he gave me before he died. 
Aww. so that, that's kind of a cool that's kind of a cool beginning that we had at this video and then to do kind of a you just brought us full circle to you know how sweet that that is to me and i think that's one of the biggest gifts that he gave me and one thing i learned rose is that the the biggest gifts that we give to one another are always intangible and so when i look for the headline in your chart and i show you mm -hmm. uh the hack on how to find it and it's i just call it my mat my astrology magic trick i find that your legacy your sound bite your headline is always a statement inside the intangible gifts that live inside of you. So in this video, I did Angelina Jolie's chart and I showed you how to find her headline. And so how you present yourself um, oftentimes is not, she presents herself as a beautiful Hollywood actress. Well, that's not her headline. No. Her headline is, you know, warrior queen, philosophical warrior queen um helping or sharing her belief system with humanity yeah and and that's her deeper truth mm -hmm. so when you do the headline i'm asking you like what is the headline of your soul's essence not what do you believe yourself to be Wow. And do you coach people through this and like, how to actually do all that inner work and then bring it out, like draw it out from them? Yeah, that's what I kind of teach in my one-on-one -on -one readings. But I also, in, in that video, I teach you how to find that meaning for yourself too, through the symbolism in the chart. So it's really fun. It's really cool. It gets very addictive. <laughs> Oh, it does. I mean, I'm actually always so like fascinated with these esoteric stuff. I'm like, <laughs> just give me more. <laughs> um, so when, when you um, watch that video, you have to have your chart next to you so you can see how to do it and then you can go do it in your own chart. Oh, wow. And do you do this in like a group work workshop or, or it's just only one-on-one? -on -one? Well, you know, I'm trying to scale my business now. Now that we're in quarantine, um, I've been reinventing what my business and what my work looks like, like I think a lot of us have. Mm -hmm. So I do do one-on-one -on reading, one -on -one readings all day, almost every day. I try to take Saturday and Sunday off. But um, now I'm really trying to teach people in group settings. And so I've done my Friday night happy hours and I teach people how to read their chart, see their chart, understand their chart. And then um, every other week, and then I do a tarot card happy hour too, where we just channel spirit and I deliver messages for you. But in, in my work now, I've been really trying to reach more people through live streams and um, virtual wow. groups, but it's kind of, fun and exciting to look at numerous it's interesting to look at your own chart but it's really also interesting to look at your own chart in relationship to other people's charts too oh, that's yeah, kind of definitely cool. yes in a group yeah wow oh and um i've noticed that with with the astrology read reading with bud baba he actually has this kind of like a a software where it actually gives like a breakdown chunk of particular times um, and it gives you like a, dis a description reading of what you need to avoid or what you, sh you should be focusing on. Do you have that kind of... Like, um, uh, yeah, that, you, you could order that in a report. Is Does he give it to you like in a printout? Yes. Yeah, so you could order that in a report, and um, that's that's like a forecasting report. But yeah. my favorite report, truthfully, to understand like what's coming up would be something on my website that I call a destiny report. And what that is is your solar return. Have you done a solar return with him? Oh, what's that? Never heard of that. This is interesting. <laughs> so the solar return report is based on your birthday and um 
it's okay. So I'll just tell you exactly what it means mm. on your birthday. So in August on your birthday, the sun, we, we measure the exact date and time that the sun will return to your exact degree in the exact plate, the exact placement that the sun was in at the time you were born. But oftentimes that can be as far as one day ahead or one day behind. So it rarely is um, going to happen on the exact, rarely is the sun gonna return to the place that your sun was at the time you were born on the exact same day and time that you were born. Does that make sense? Yeah, so reading, wouldn't it? What? Would that be a huge long reading? Would that be quite... The, re the report is pretty long. And so what it does is, is it recreates um, the... It, it recreates this, um, this energy and it shows you in this report the major themes that are going to play out for the entire year until the sun comes back to that same exact degree that it was at at the time you were born for the following year. So wow. you get a whole year and it's pretty fascinating. Wow. I had this client who came to me for a, for a destiny reading. That's the solar return report. Uh, and I can do a solar return reading. And I had told her, you know what? You are going to really have to isolate this year. You're going to be kind of a hermit. You're going to isolate. You're going to feel like you're drained, you're tired. And this is a year to really recharge your batteries. Well, three months after that, she, oh my God, that poor lady, she broke her knee or she broke her leg. She broke her knee. Oh, and then... And then she had to have knee surgery. And then after she had knee surgery, like four months, she was just starting to walk. She fell down and broke her other hip. Oh, no. And she was like, I cannot believe this. So I couldn't see why she was going to have to isolate and feel exhausted and hermit and have a year like that. But I could see it in the chart. And then she had that accident and she was down for a whole year. Oh my gosh. A whole I know. Yeah. All the yeah, because she had a hip replacement and then a knee. It was bad. Oh. But the solar return chart can show you the themes for that year. That was just one thing. There were like 50 others. Right. So so um like on my on my website, I I sell that report. It's called a destiny report and it can be up to 50 pages long. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, wow. I'll definitely have to get one then for sure. I'll, get, I'll give you one rose. You just, um, you just send me an email with your information. I'll just send you one. Oh my God. It'll be so great. Complimentary. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Of course, my pleasure. My pleasure. Look, I've got my appropriate Leo. Leo. <laughs> oh my god! You should actually sell them the, the mugs. Oh my god, these mugs are so expensive and they are so gorgeous. And they are made by an artist out of London, um, Jack Dodd, and they are fine china, and they have real gold it's oh my real gold. gosh that's beautiful i wish i wish look at my quarantine nails do you have quarantine quarantine nails <laughs> quarantine I did... nails oh no i did mine last last night they're, they're okay they're a bit chipped still you're a good girl mine were so beautiful and now your quarantine nails <laughs> I know. I need to put a little time into them now. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, just in, anything else before we wrap it up? Um, I can just go on and on. I, I, I just want, oh my God, you just giving me a whole new light in tarot reading and astrology. Thinking, God, oh, this girl's got it going on. <laughs> 
You're so cute. Where do you live in Australia? Melbourne. Oh, do you do you love it? Were you born and raised there? I was born and raised here. You know what? I'm I'm actually quite su surprised that you actually asked asked me that because I feel like I'm a I'm a big fish now. That's actually outgrew its pond, and I feel I really need need to just. I don't know. I feel like my spirit's left here. <laughs> it's not here. Where, where do you want to go? What do you feel about it? In the States. Oh, do you know what state you'd like to live in? Well, it's, it's funny. I mean, I've been, I traveled up to Florida twice, the West Palm Beach for Tony Robbins events uh, in December and January last year. And I, I just felt really at home at home and I feel like you know since being finding out that I'm a light worker and such no place feels like home but from what I've experienced and what I've actually uh, who, the people that I've spoken to the environment the culture just the air I feel I don't know I feel that's my place it's, it's interesting Rose do you want to do something really fun right now yeah, why not? I'm bold enough. Okay. There's something, there's something called astrocartography. And I can take your birth information right now. I can share screen with you. And I can erect, I can erect Florida. I can erect all of the United States for you. And I can see where your soul's vortexes, spiritual vortexes resonate. And you can see for yourself and screenshot it. Do you want to do it? Oh, this is freaking me out. Yeah. Why, why not? Oh my God, girl. <laughs> okay, so let me do I'm it. Not expecting this at all. Okay. I'll oh, that's okay. It'll be fun. Let me do this. All right, go on. Just for fun. <laughs> and if you, want, if you want to, you can show other people and they can learn all yeah, the different, sure. different things you can do with astrology. You might want to cut this part out just because it's like, this is boring, but you can cut to the, you know, the, uh, when I like load it. All right, cool. Also, you, when you edit this, you might want to edit just for your privacy, your, your birth information, you know. Do I do Rose Tan? Uh, my maiden is Dang, D-A-N-G, if that helps. D-A-N-G. Okay. okay, and then, okay, let's look. I'm going to show you this. It's so cool. Okay, August, August 22nd. Yeah, 1980. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that happened. That freaked me out. Woo! That's okay. That's okay. We're Lights. probably going to edit this part out anyway, right? Okay, what, what time? Um, oh, six a.m. or oh, 0658 a.m. 6.58 a.m. Uh -huh. in Melbourne. 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 Yeah. Down here. Melbourne, Australia. VIC. Victoria, yes, VIC. Okay. Oh, wow. Now watch that. There you are, first house. Oh, wow. Okay, so you're 28 degrees 56 minutes. So you're not a 29 degree yet. <laughs> you're four four <laughs> minutes from 29 degree. Yay! Nobody wants a 29 degree. So let's don't give it to you if you don't have to have it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so watch this. Okay, let's do this. Okay, watch this. This is so fun. Are you ready? Oh my God. I feel like it's going to... So let's put in here, let's put in here United States. Mm, it's going to make me pick a place. Okay, let's do Florida and then I can move it around. Where did you like in Florida? Um, well, I only traveled to West Palm Beach. West Palm Beach. Florida. Okay, let's put that there. Now let's go over here to the treasure map. And do you want to do what do you what do you want to look at? Optimism and opportunity, maybe? That sounds about right, yeah. 
or vocation and career or i think optimism and up because you it's it's not like you're looking for a job it's like you are the creator through your opportunity right right so number nine sounds good yeah okay let's just look and see now don't be discouraged if it doesn't not at all pop up as a way i mean but I, it will show you visited you know uh las vegas and all, all, and all other places. I just felt like Florida was where I actually had a lot of growth as well, I think. Well, let's see where, um, let's see where, now, what this is showing us, can you see it? Mm-hmm. Oh, what's all that? What this is, I know, um, let's see. Okay, so what this is showing us, hold on one second is all your natural spiritual vortexes the white places the white places show us where you have to create it yourself the red places show you where it happens effortlessly you're supposed to move to la <laughs> right here oh my god you should you should screenshot this or new york but uh, the culture in Florida, you know, you might not resonate deeply with it, but look at the West Coast. Look at this. Oh my God, this is freaking me out. Oh, I've been to San Francisco. Yes, Los Angeles. Oh my God, it's freaking me out. Oops. Okay, so this is called astro cartography, and you know you're lucky because like my spiritual vortex ends up in Oklahoma City, <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> which I don't know if you really, I don't know if you really know what that means, but it is like so far from who I am. And then my other vortex is in the Pacific Ocean between Seattle and Hawaii. So, <laughs> you know, the, the, the software doesn't understand culture. It is just measuring vibrational energy so it could be anywhere but look at this and i think it goes all the way up here isn't that fascinating now if we go back and we look at hold on one second If we go back and we look at the map and we do something different, like which one would you like? Love and romance, vocation and career, inspiration. Coaching, creativity. Um, let's see this focus. I'm tossing between number eight and zero. Okay, let's do eight. Mm. Let's go look and the and it will be different now. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> what? I'm all over the Chicago. place. <laughs> all over the place. And this is culture and creativity. Anywhere you want to go. <laughs> Anywhere. I mean, my map doesn't look like this, Rose. Does this change from time to time or is this a solid? No, this is solid. This is taking your, your birth chart and it's overlaying it uh, on the entire earth. I mean, I can do this in Asia too for you. I can do this anywhere. I can show you the whole entire world. Um, oh my God. I know. So it's, it's freaking it's, me out. What does that mean? Like, it means where culture and culture and creativity will come very easily for you in the red zones and in the yellow zones as well. But the red zones are the really hot, hot, hot spots for you over here. And then the white is where it's not a bad idea for you to be there. It just shows you that it's going to take more effort and more energy for you to 
you know, feel culturally and creatively fulfilled. Wow. So watch this. Hopefully it won't take too much time, but it's really cool what you can do with um, astrocartography, looking at your spiritual vortexes. It's so, so cool. So I'm going to just show you like the whole world. I bet you you light up the whole world, Rose. <laughs> it's oh, funny. funny that I used to say, say that. I've, I've been called universal goddess, worldwide woman. It's like, okay, that's really nice. But what does that mean, really? Oh, my God, you're freaking me out right now. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Oh, wow. But you can if we were out, can you? <laughs> what? You can really zoom out. Yeah, you can. And um, like if we were to do, let's just say we go back and we do work, you know, like career, okay. it, it might only have four lines. Oh. But what this says is, is that you are a creative person anywhere you go and that you're very culturally adaptive and you like culture everywhere you go, you like all different kinds yeah. and that you feel comfortable. Yeah. And um, we can do this. So look at this. Let's do, what was the other one? Zero. Okay. Let's do responsibility and focus. Yeah. And go back. I should look at love and ro romance, but I don't know why I'm not. And I, I start to feel like I think I'm, I'm considered as the woman of love, Venus, and and, and all. But yeah. I feel like I need to focus on, on myself first. Yes. And so, see, there's not when it comes to responsibility and focus, there's not as much. Yeah. I mean, it's still quite a bit, but again, you're supported over here on the West Coast. West Coast. And. Is this the North Pole, Rose? <laughs> I'm not too sure no. what that means. What is that? Where, where I don't know. Let's, let's go look where all the points meet. Yeah, what does that mean? That would be a vortex for you. A vortex. Wow. I thought that would be uh, like Australia. That's where well, I am. Oh, look at this. It's right here. <laughs> that, Does it mean I'll be moving there? <laughs> well, if you moved here, I mean, I think you would feel so much energy and so much power, you oh, know. God. Right here. What is the, where, where is it? <laughs> I don't know where I found. Um, That's Europe well, area. Yeah, is this, is this, I see let's go in, down there, let me, let me Russia? go zoom in more. Oh my God, I hope it's not Russia, that'd be scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's an island. <laughs> oh my God. You have to screenshot this. <gasps> Definitely. Screenshot that. Yep. Can you screenshot it? I'll do that right now. Okay, and then let's let's go figure out where this is. What continent is this? Krishna Hub. Oh, this is Brighton. Okay, where is that? <laughs> I'm embarrassed that I don't know. You'll have to take this out of the video for sure, where we're like, where is that? <laughs> no, this is actually quite, quite good because it's, the, it's like a no man's land. <laughs> it's quite mysterious. <laughs> you I, need I like to it. travel there. I mean to travel. Oh, that's Greenland. You know oh, what? This is the United States, this is Canada. This oh, is Greenland. And this is a little island off of Greenland in between. Um, it looks like England and Greenland and that little island. <laughs> oh my God. Interesting. That's a very strong vortex for you, for responsibility. You'd feel a great deal of responsibility, probably because you have to go hunt 
for your own food. <laughs> Probably. It doesn't look civilized. <laughs> oh so do yeah, I do it um, with that kind of like a center point for all reading? Uh, I think, yeah, I think all of them have a center point somewhere, but, um, but. Amazing. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to get to Australia. Here we go. You see it. Nothing much there, hey. <laughs> I was There's no right here. Yeah. So I think you might be right that you could be outgrowing it. Yeah. I just feel like there's nothing much left here. Even though even though I, yeah, I think because I've been born and raised here for this long. How yeah. do you feel about Sydney over here? It doesn't excite me, to be honest. No, it doesn't excite me. Yeah. yeah. It's sad, isn't it? I just feel sad, to be honest. Yeah. That's okay. I think it's really normal for us to outgrow our, you know, Rose, I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona. I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona. And so I love it there because I have family you know, I really appreciate it, but I, I couldn't happily go back there. No? You know? Yeah, no, I outgrew that place too. So Seattle is an intellectual hub and, you know, we have here, we have headquarters for Amazon, Boeing, Starbucks, Microsoft. Yeah. We have a huge uh, Facebook Facebook, Google, it's technology hub. It's just very intellectual. It was voted the number one uh, smartest city in the United States. It's just smart. Yeah. And I just, it's also very um, compassionate, earth friendly. And I love that too. Where in Phoenix, you know, I just, I don't, I don't resonate with the vibration there like I do here, but I do have my roots and my heritage there. That's so right. I, yeah. I can, I can really relate to you that way. Aww. Thank you. So it's, been so, it's, really it's been so fun. Meeting you. It's nice to have a new friend out there in the world. Yeah. From Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> lonely, lonely me. <laughs> now I great. Sorry, go on. It's been so great. And tell me, how can I find all your podcasts? Okay, so um, I'm actually just starting it up. So it's on SoundCloud, Spotify, uh, on my YouTube okay. channel. So it's Rose Tan Life Lifestyle. Um, where else can you find me? Instagram, Facebook, Snitcher. Did I mention that? So those are okay. the main platforms that I'll be use, using. But I'm working closely with Kwa, Bu, with Kwa Bui. So you've actually spoken to him before before so he's he's helping me out and doing the tech now tech side of things which i'm not good at even though I've, I've married like two it men i'm still like i just don't want to deal with with, with the tech technology stuff you know <laughs> so yeah so that's you're that's the main the that i'll be you using but um yeah how do how can people um reach out to you what's the best method Okay, so it's pretty easy. Um, they can follow me on YouTube, my Soul Navigation channel. They can email me at soulnavigation1111 at gmail.com. They can follow me on Facebook, Soul Navigation, and Instagram, Soul underscore Navigation, where I post daily videos. And um, uh, what else? They can, oh, my website. How about that? soulnavigation.com pretty easy if you google soul navigation you'll find me somewhere that's what i did and it came up you you first something that's very easy and soul navigation it, it just says it all on, on on what you actually do all all that um what, what was that astral cartography yeah that <laughs> it's gonna make sense 
and you do all these tarot, like you just know how to navigate through these these things to help people guide themselves. I'm thinking, oh my God, yes. Thank you again, Meredith. I'm, I'm so grateful and blessed. Such a truly honor. And it's such a pleasure time just to get to know you more at what you do and just you as a person. You're such a beaming, such a big heart and soul. It's like, this girl's got so much heart. It's like, I have to get, get to know her. So thank you again. Oh, thank, you. thank you, Rose. It's been a pleasure. And I wish you the best of luck and stay in touch. Definitely. Mostly will. I will. Okay, darling. Okay. Thank you so much again. Enjoy your night. You're welcome. Bye, hon. Bye.